Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I want to use my paints and add colour to my crocus and then I'll be ready to do some stitching. So let me just get myself a little bit organised here. A bit of an absorbent piece of paper there in case it gets a little bit too wet. Hard surface underneath. I've got my water and my pen. Probably should get rid of this. Would be a smart thing to do but the girl isn't smart at times i think would be right but um now i decided to do white um uh, purely because they're the ones i grew up now if the last video when i googled the flower of the crocus um there was uh purple ones and yellow ones which I didn't know existed. So white is what I remember as a child. So that's what I'm going to go with. I was all excited about purple, but the fuchsias are, are here. So I thought I'm, I'm just going to break it up a little bit. So I'm going to probably start with my gouache paint, to be honest. I don't even know if I'll need my ink tents. There is white in amongst it. I don't think I'm going to need them. I'll do as per the lily which was all gouache. As you can see, I really nibbled into that. So I'm going to follow that lead. Now in the center is yellow, and then there's these little red um, fibers coming out, like little, very fine. So I think I'll use my threads to do those little guys find a, a pink or red satin stitch. Um, the yellow, I think I'll stitch that too. I'm not going to potentially muddy it by adding colour and just get white in. So, real exciting. Um, I might upgrade that brush to this one. It's just got a little bit bigger. <clears throat> A little bit bigger so that's the plan real exciting today I'll have to come up with a story for you just get some more moisture in there now <clears throat> it's just a case of painting it on I won't go too thick with it, I don't think. I did with the lily. I really lacquered it with the white. But um, I might just back it off a little bit, just so it looks a little bit different, and just focus on the tips of the petals. <clears throat> so what have you guys been up to? You guys need to tell me some stories. I'll give you a topic. What's a good topic? I know, childhood flowers. What flower, if you think of any flowers, maybe being in your mother's garden or your grandmother's garden or a neighbour's garden. There we go. Now you guys can tell me a story. It's always one or two flowers <clears throat> that we seem to hold close to us. And the crocus was definitely one. The I did speak about it a little bit in the last video when I was drawing these. Um, oh, they're not daffodils, jonquils. They're a tiny itty bitty daffodil. And I think too, they used to pop up sort of after the cold, cold winter. And the winters on the farm... <coughs> were cold and as a child it was like oh goodness where's those nice summer days hang on a minute guys <coughs> <coughs> hmm. so to have those flowers pop up and it was sort of in a garden bed that was very sheltered from sunlight it was to the south and our sun was on the north so for you guys on the Northern Hemisphere, 
your sun would predominantly be on the south, I would guess, and the north would be quite a cool part of your yard. But of course, it's the opposite here for us. The southern part of your house is where you get the most shade and the, if there's going to be mould appear on your house, like because um, there's not enough sun to dry out, those boards of your house or the bricks that's the side the southern side i might go quite bold with it on this yeah so to have these little crocus and jonkles appear and there was a heap of, um, the, the plant that was there all year round was the agapanthus. So all year you had these beautiful big agapanthus flowers. And then up popped in amongst those strappy big leaves, the um, little guys like this, little bulbs. We had them for years. I haven't yet found any crocus bulbs for myself but it's on my radar to add them to my garden I won't paint down into the center because what I might do with this is stitch heavily into the bottom and then maybe stay away from the top and at least I've got this paint at the top of all the petals I did notice when I was doing the lily that it got quite chalky and dusty as I pushed a needle through that paint, I had um, white dust. So I think, I think I'll avoid putting stitches up there because then I can use the paint to its fullest advantage. That's good. So real simple, adding a bit of paint. Now, I might let that dry and see what comes of it. Now the leaves, they're very fresh green, these little leaves. Wonder if I use field green. Which one would that be? If I spin my paints around the right way. Around this way, it's this guy. Gosh, it's fresh. Give it a go. Give it a go. What does it matter? You can always tone it down with stitch. Maybe I just try it over here. Oh, it's very green, isn't it? Yeah, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> Start down low. <coughs> No, I'm not okay with that. Let's just pretend that that didn't happen. I might just see if I can. It's too fresh. I could mix something with it to tone it down. It is a possibility. So let's grab our little tray. And let's see if we can get a little bit of it in there. We might as well have a play. Let's warm it up a little bit with a, a bit of... Mm, here we go. Uh, that's just going to make it brighter. I might even just try another green. Where's that leaf green? It's this one. No. Let's get my bearings here. It's not the right... Oh, see? <laughs> that's the ink tense pencils. I'm thinking, where is this bit, this blooming thing? Um... Turn around the right way. Oh my goodness. What could possibly go wrong today? Let's try this guy with it. Get a bit of depth to the colour. Yeah, that's getting better. Yeah, that's better. It's a bluier grey. Let's 
get a bit of that in. Yeah, that's, I'm happy with that. Because they're very vibrant green, but they're not that froggy green. That's better. That's good because that's a different green to what I've had before. So that's going to make the, the white pop a little bit too. Having that go darker down in here. And we need to have a look at the bulb. Just a smearing. None of my leaves have been real predominant. They're just a smearing of colour. Stitch a little into it and then leave it at that. It's all about the flowers. Just like a smear. <laughs> Do you like my technical speak? For those artists out there will be just cringing. <laughs> oh, gee. They'll be thinking, gee, that girl, <clears throat> she's breaking all the rules. That's getting a bit bolder. I might come back in now with a bit more. Highlighting, shading, technical speak. Really love these squash paints. If you haven't found yourself a set and you're interested in playing, <clears throat> highly, highly recommend it, actually. Because they, um, oh, they're just interesting to paint with. You should get this more dense colour. Really enjoying them. And I got them uh, from a child's website, children's painting set. So they were inexpensive, really inexpensive compared to some paints you see online. It's like, oh my gosh, I'd have to start selling work to afford the paint. So these were good. And um, the tip I got from using them, I got from Fleur. She uses them a lot to create flowers and things on her work at times. So I thought, oh, I've never heard of them. I've heard of the word gouache, but I've always sort of made it myself out of acrylic paint. <clears throat> there we go. Still a bit fresh for my liking. Probably looks better in the screen for you guys than it does me because the camera tends to warm up all of the... Um, let's get rid of this green before we have a, a mess. The camera warms things up, I've noticed. It's a bit fresher here. But um, no, that's good. All right, the bulb. So we can have a little play with brown. So once again, let's go to maybe this guy to kick it off, that brown. Just to get a little bit of colour in the bottom there. Am I in camera? Yep. And then we can drift into lighter tones as we get to the top of the bulb where all the this sort of flakes a little bit as the bulb erupts might leave it at that don't get too sort of feel like I need a bit of a toning through here this chocolatey colour now let's have a look at this guy. So I haven't had to play with brown yet. 
Let's add that to here. It's these little little those little guys. Then we'll go this brown. Am I in camera? This guy at the top, which is that fellow. As we get lighter and bring it in as these little oh, love it there we go Yeah, that's good. I might pick up this guy. It's real dark, I think. And just maybe do some of the dots in that. It shows that it's a bit of a rough surface, this little bulb. There's a little piece coming through here. Maybe I'll do that in the darker tone as well. It's nearly a green. I might just drop a little bit of chocolate in there. I'm not sure about that. That was the right decision. So let's try and knock that back. Yeah, that's better. Well, there you go. That's pretty good. Can't decide if I like my leaves, guys. What could we do to make them a bit warmer? I feel like the brown has really shown me that it's a warm. Let me grab this. I might go in with that pencil and see if I can push that out of the way. Do something a bit more with those leaves and just Tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Just to bring another tone of green in there, other than that bright one. It's made the plant a little bit more interesting, I guess. Not so primary coloured. Dirtied it up a little. It's a bit fresh. Just warm it up. Yeah, much better. Sort of made it a little bit more. A little less cartoony. Does that make sense? Don't know if I want to wet that intense. What would happen if I did that? Probably a few people out there that know all about these things would be going, no, don't do it. I'm going to do it. Let's have a look. Just brought it forward a bit. Made it more intense. But that's okay. I like that. Sort of showing like there's light and shade a bit better. I think that's what it needed. Yeah. Happy, happy. Now we got it. Now the plant looks more interesting. Considering the flowers are just white, like, I guess playing with the leaves a little bit. It's not a bad thing. Love the bulb. Got a great range of browns in my gouache paint, so that's good. Probably get a little bit more intense down in there because that'd be dark and moody in there. Be no light down there. Be all this growth coming out. So yeah. Great, 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 great. That looks more interesting. It's really helped the white. Um, petals pop 
So that's pretty much it for the painting side of things. I wonder what we could do next. It really needs to dry. But I think we could be cheeky and get in there with some needle and thread and at least maybe have a go at stitching because that gouache has dried really quick. Let me grab my colours. Okay. What we might do is have a play with these paints so they can dry. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead. Usually it's the next video, but let me just run this over to the sink before I spill it. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. All the dangerous things like water and wet paint palettes are out of my way and the girl's a lot more comfortable because she can't make a mess. And the fudge cat is sleeping, so he's not going to jump up here and cause trouble. Okay. Oh, I didn't even have a look at the Windsor Newton. It's not a bad green. I've got bigger... I've got... Shocking English. I have bigger colour palettes of these. I should get them out because it's only got the two. But that's all right. It's only so much paint you need out, girl. But more options that you need. So, let's have a look at the little stamens and then there's the little red oh i need more threads hang on hang on okay just grab these silk ones i don't use them much I'm wondering That's too bright, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's not, I'm looking over here, there's not a good red to go with it. Those two, if I, if I was out of shot, I apologise. Those two caught my eye, but there's nothing in there. All right, forget that idea. Let's find a nice raspberry red, I think. That's going to be the little fibres, and I might just use up that little bit. 498, classic colour. Um, and a yellow. I want them to be quite obvious, but not... Maybe that and that. Feels pretty good. Let's have a go at stitching. Really packing it in today. Like it took, what, all of 10 minutes to put some paint on there? Well, we want more action than that. So let's get stitching, guys. Just looking for a needle. Here it is. To take that. This is a pearl cotton sunshine. So I'm going to say it's a wonderful... Wherever there's a name on my pearl cottons, that's wonderful because I remember buying them just after COVID and in a couple box sets. You know, they do those sets of colours just to get me started on what, what was this pearl cotton all about. Then when they arrived, I'm like, oh, well, I know what that is. It's similar to crochet cotton, if not crochet cotton. And they all have names. So that's how I know now because I unwound them onto these to fit into my um, needle book, um, what do you call it, this thing. Um, then I started looking at DMC, like this one is the DMC, and what I found with those is you actually need two, two of these really to make it fit comfortably. So the balls from DMC, here's one here, have more meterage on them than um, 
I might keep that out actually for the petals. I might use that as the two tone. Getting sidetracked. Yeah, so DMC, to make them fit comfortably, you really do need two of these little guys to wind them on. If you're going to wind them on, you can leave them like that. There's no rhyme or wrong. It's just that when I was travelling a lot between houses and mucking around, um, I just found I could have more colours with me if they were wound out to some degree. And what's left is in a stand just to my side here, still in its hole so that you know i can um so what am i doing here i'm thinking of doing a bullion knot to be honest i'm going to assume that there's a stem and then this gets thicker may not be correct some of the photos that I saw too, it looked like it had like a little thick edge and then, so I'm wondering if I could get two bullion knots side by side. Uh, cast on stitch is looking like what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that, that's, that's better because it'll give me the little edge Sort of, they look like fluted little, I don't know. Google it, guys. You'll, you'll see what I mean when you get to some of the photos. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Looks like there's a little edge to it. So what I might do is we'll anchor that down. Then we can come up here at the base again. And then take it down into the actual plant. Yeah, that's it. So I might just do a little stitch there. My weave is very thick. So I'm just going to do a little anchoring stitch there just so that it sits nicely. And then I'll come back up here. Whoops. And do another one. A bullion knot would be fine. If you know bullion knots, you'll get the same raised effect. But the beauty of the cast-on stitch is you get a little edge to your bullion knot. Bullions are very rounded. Do I have one? No, not handy. They're little cast-on stitches. So this is how I do it. One, two. You want the cast-on stitches on your needle. This is for the newbies. Um, to be the same length as the bite of fabric that you have on your needle. Can you see that? If you do more than that, you'll get a cast on stitch that has a little kink in it. If you do even more, you can get curls. You can get them looking like tendrils. You can do a lot with cast on stitch. Then you just support your stitches and gently bring your thread back through until it's seated nicely and then anchor it down and that's it such a clever stitch Ms. jennifer clouston showed me that when i was lucky enough to catch her in a class uh, on the sunshine coast and she showed me she said have you do you know cast on stitch and i'm like no and then when she showed me, I'm like, oh, I've seen that around, but never had the time or the inclination to explore it and understand it. And then when she showed me, I'm like, oh, now that's clever. That makes you look like a professional. There's just some stitches, I think, that when you pull them out of your box of tricks, you look like you know what you're doing. And cast on stitch is that stitch. So now I'm scooting back up. I've done the little <clears throat> stem. I guess technically that little stem could have been a darker yellow. Probably would have been nice. Didn't think of that. But anyway, we've committed to it now. One, no need to count, girl. Just use your eye. To say that's roughly about the bite of fabric. 
I really should be letting this dry. But I will say there's not a lot of ink uh, around the flowers. Like that dries really quickly. But it's a bit damp around here. I can sort of feel it. So I'm trying to be very careful. And technically I should be doing this in the next video. But I'll come back next week and we'll play with white. I'll do weaving and beads and all of that pretty stuff. So now we're going to do the little stitch down the bottom to make it look like they're part of the center of the flower. There we go. How clever is that? So I'm just going to knot that off. Now, that's not enough thread to do another one. So I might just go straight to the edge of this piece and use it as in I've been any threads left over I've just been storing in little stitches around the border that's rather cute I like it it's just a hint it's I'm certainly not going to do the whole thing I don't want it to look like a rainbow of color on the outer edge I just want little random little morsels so all my scraps have a home I've even had the odd scrap from other projects and I've gone and grabbed this and just stitched them on sometimes I cut the length of thread just so that I don't have much left over which is good if you're that clever but then sometimes you have bits left so just use them Use them somewhere on your piece. If you're creating a slow stitch panel, just stitch it in somewhere. It's a bit random. So that's probably the best I'm going to get. All right. Good. He's now got a home. So let's have a play now with that red. I don't want it too overpowering, so I'm thinking I'm going to use just two strands. Is that already cut? Yeah, it's way too long, but I'll use it anyway. It's way, way too long. It's going to be a knotty mess. Let's predict it. So let's see how thick this looks I technically should have my hoop oh, breaking all the rules let's do maybe a little stem stitch because I do want some thickness but not too overpowering because it's so fine in the photos it's like this tiny little bit so that's the end of that one because the petal comes up there oh what have I done here is it just a bad knot oh my goodness so I go again is that gonna hold yep whiskers coming out of this flower so if that gives you a bit of a visual on how fine they need to be can't believe I'm stitching without a hoop the whole piece has been in a hoop and I'm being very naughty but that's I think okay because this is sort of not pulling on the fabric the hoops great for tensioning your fabric when it's a loose weave so that you don't pucker your work satin stitch and and um, weaving and stuff like that I'll definitely grab my hoop for that I don't think there was a little knob on the end of these little whiskers I think it was pretty straight lined so I'll leave it at that whether there is in real life there might be so 
There's that little guy. I tend with my satin stitch to, oh, don't do it, to work from the tip back to the base. Okay, let's do the next one. How are we going for time? Heaps of time. We might be able to get all these. Centre's done. There's only two flowers, so surely. Okay, so now I'm going back. Then I'm going tuck it in there, halfway along that stitch. And again, there's a few different ways of doing stem stitch. Did I say satin stitch? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Can't talk and walk at the same time. <laughs> oh, I used to have this manager years ago with our business. She was the sweetest, sweetest lady. And um, she was with us for many years. And then she went off to have her family. And anyway, <laughs> we were in deep in conversation. And she was walking beside me through the store. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I have two Christmas shops. So around all the Christmas trees were random baskets to hold goodies that you would want for your Christmas tree decorating. And it was the off-season. So when I say off-season, October to December is our what we class as our season. That's when society says, oh, Santa's coming, let's decorate and they, we get busier and busier. The off-season is every time after that. So in that time, we're either doing inventory or decorating, getting ready, packing shelves with new stock, you know, just behind-the-scenes stuff. We are open. We're open all year bar one month when the staff will have their annual leave. Anyway, we're walking through the store back to the register area, chatting away about something, and Deep in conversation, the pair of us, not really watching where we're going. Next minute, I hit this crash, bang, <laughs> and she's completely disappeared. Where She's laughing, I'm laughing, and we were just in stitches. And what had happened is we must have been doing inventory because everything was pulled out from the Christmas trees, these baskets. They were rectangular and um, so everything was everywhere and we weren't watching where we were going. We were side by side. She's put one foot into a basket, which has taken her down. She didn't hurt herself. It's just just the funniness of it all. So, yeah, she's she's gone straight down to the floor. She's <laughs> rolling on the floor with a basket attached to her foot. And I've turned around and I'm by now two or three metres further along and I've gone to talk to her again, sort of like look for her because there's this all goodness crash, bang, boom sound. She's not there. Then I've turned a little bit further to see her on the floor with this basket stuck to her foot and by this time she's in hysterics, absolute hysterics, rolling on the floor in laughter with her foot in the air with a basket <laughs> She said it was funny. We're, we're very fortunate she didn't hurt herself. But uh, we were, you know, slow motion. Down we go. Gosh, I tell you. Laugh. She couldn't even get off the floor. I think I ended up on the floor next to her laughing as well, trying to get this basket off of her foot. Oh, I'm sure you've got a visual of it. The pair of us, it would have been the off-season baskets were away from the trees. Therefore, when the customer's in the store, the baskets are tucked back to the sides of the Christmas trees, full of stock. So, yeah, it must have been, yeah, it was definitely off-season. The basket would not have got a foot stuck in it if it had been in location, ready for the Christmas season. But, yeah, it was funny. You can picture it, can't you? I remember a stack I had that no one saw because it happened late at night out the front of the house, but I laid on the grass laughing my head off for, oh, I don't know, it felt like an hour, but it was, it was probably only about two minutes. But, yeah, we were 
um, living in a rental property and we were only just married. So it was years ago and we'd had pizzas for dinner, takeaway pizzas. And um, we must have had people over because I remember there was a stack of boxes, like four or five. There must have been people upstairs and I was clearing up. So I decided I'd take them straight to the bin because we only had a little kitchen. And it was a two-storey house that we'd rented. And um, <laughs> Miss Tidy Up after everything. I was never a real big drinker. I'm still not a big drinker. So whenever our mates were over that did drink, they'd all be sitting around enjoying a drink and I'd just start tidying up. Something to do. It's probably the OCD in me. And, um, yeah, so I've gone trotting down these stairs with this stack of boxes. I'm sure it was like four pizza, empty pizza boxes. And I was looking at my feet, so I was in control. Down the stairs I go, around the corner onto the tiles, out the front door there was a little piece of concrete. By then I'm seeing the wheelie bin in the distance. Must have been bin day or something. And, um, yeah, I've stepped from the concrete. Let's say that's your concrete edge. And then it's grass, but there was a slope from years of people stepping and it just had eroded a little bit. So my foot's gone onto that slope and slid. And then I've slid with the boxes still in the air, sliding, which got me away from the concrete. My goodness, if I had landed on that concrete at the doorstep, it would have been a whole different kettle of fish. But anyway, I've managed to half cartwheel, half slide in pitch black because it was only the street lamp holding these pizza boxes, four of them, in my arms to the point where <laughs> I've landed on my bum. The pizza boxes have gone aerial. They're all now strewn over the front yard and I'm like sitting on my bottom on the grass halfway between the, the wheelie bin or the, you know, the bin for the rubbish and um, the front door in the dark laughing, laughing and giggling. And I couldn't even get up. I was just, I couldn't believe it. It happens. It happens so quick. Let's get that little anchoring stitch there. I'm just worried that um, that big stitch I took at the base of that little guy might move around. So I'm just putting a sneaky little stitch there just to make sure she's safe. Yeah, so can you picture it? Oh tell you, I'm cacking myself laughing. So I've finally pulled myself together, picked up all of the crusts and <laughs> pizza boxes, got them into the bin and made my way back upstairs. And, of course, no one knew because I was down there by myself. They are all sitting around watching a movie, having a few drinks, and I've gone up there and said, you won't believe what happened. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Nothing worse than a, a, a very choreographed <laughs> stack and no one sees your work. No one sees the pure skill that it takes to land on your bottom on the grass. It was pretty funny. Alrighty. I've got one more to go. Look. So once again for the newbies, bring your needle up, take it to the top of your little spot that you want the length. So your needle decides your length. Then get yourself in a position where you can twist it onto your needle. I'm sure you've figured this out already. But look, go and watch some tutorials because there's probably more explanations out there that are a little bit better than my cack handed way but that is pretty pretty good give it a little tug support your little your little stitches and you've now got a raised little interesting element it's a it's a cracker of a stitch guys get this one under your belt because you'll be surprised how often it's handy. Oh, they're good. They're nice and bold. 
love flowers that have really bold centers to them. All right, now what I might do is I can actually put those threads, oh look, I've got a little bit left. Again, let's get rid of this onto that perimeter. Then I might pop it down here next to the pink from the fuchsia. Then I want to select my threads. No, I won't select my threads because I need to come back in another video. I'm not going off to do stitching on this. I'll come back. We'll leave it at this and then I can pick it up next week and work out what exactly I'm doing with beads and, you know, so I might actually just tidy up properly because there's other projects I want to work on next. I will come back to you. Another day. Gaz is due out any minute. I heard the shower going, so he's going to appear at my door any minute. So it's perfect timing. When he arrives, I'll probably say goodbye and go and start my day. Not that I have anything major planned. It's housework today. I've already got the washing machine going. On my second load. Probably could find more housework to do, but we don't want to overdo it, do we? Don't want to outdo ourselves or exhaust ourselves. There we go. Probably could have got more little stitches out of that, but that's enough. Trim that. Not. Very good. Okay, so the centers of our little crocus are in position. Love them. And then next week we will work out what we're doing with the, the petals and the leaves. And then maybe the fourth episode we focus just on the bulb. We might do that. We'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. I'm going to say goodbye and uh, catch you all in the next video. Bye.